Hola, bienvenidos. Welcome to beautiful Morelia. Buenos dias, good morning country collectors. We are so excited because we have made it to our 18th state here in Mexico. We're in Michoacan, baby. Woo -woo. And today we are gonna be exploring its capital city, Morelia, which is just gorgeous. We can't wait to show you around. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. And stick around to the end when we share some more of our recommendations. Let's start with how we got here. In Mexico City, we bought tickets headed to Morelia on the Primera Plus line for 565 pesos each. The stunning 300 kilometer journey took just over five hours. Once in Morelia, we got a secure taxi to our place in El Centro for 70 pesos. Welcome to where we're staying. We booked this Airbnb for $35 a night. Our room is fit with a king size bed, seating area, desk, TV, AC, and a nice bathroom. Downstairs, there is a shared kitchen open to all guests, as well as a nice courtyard to lounge in. All right, who's ready for some breakfast? We'll see you over there. And just like that, we have made it here to Cafe Campanario. We brought you here because it has an incredible view of the cathedral and plaza below, which we are gonna explore after our meal, but this is just a little teaser. For breakfast, I got an egg white omelet and a side salad with a Hugo Verde, and Adam went with. My favorite, the Chilaquiles Verdes con huevo and a nice cappuccino. Let's jump in. All right, that was good, but the view took the cake, so let's head down and get a closer look. Today, we're gonna be exploring Morelia's historic center, which was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991 for its well-preserved historical buildings, such as this one behind me here, the emblematic Morelia Cathedral. The cathedral was completed in 1774 after 84 years of construction. Inside, you can find the second largest organ in Mexico with over 4,600 pipes. And like many of the buildings in the city, the cathedral was constructed using this light pink quarry stone known as Cantera that gives it this very unique look. And if you happen to be here on a Saturday, you cannot miss the world-class sound and light show that takes place right here at 9 p.m. You are going to want to arrive a little early to get a nice spot because it gets crowded, but wow, seeing the fireworks light up the night sky over the cathedral is something I will never forget. Just incredible. To the east of the cathedral, you can find this beautiful plaza, which is a great place to hang out in or cool off in, which is exactly what we saw the St. Bernard doing the other day. On the other side, you will find the Plaza de Armas. This is the core of the city center and one of the best places to start and spend your trip here in Morelia. It's definitely one of the prettiest and lively Zocalos we've seen. There are people everywhere hanging out on the grass, skateboarding, enjoying the performers. I swear you could sit here all day and be entertained. We even got to witness the traditional folk dance known as Danza de los Viejitos, the dance of the old men, which is something you can't miss. It's also where you'll find the colorful Morelia letters, which is a great place to snap a photo. And along the Zocalo, you can find trolleys like this. The price is 80 pesos and it takes about one hour. It will take you around the city to all the highlights. I'm sure it's a great way to experience Morelia. Surrounding the cathedral and Zocalo are so many wonderful restaurants and cafes, as well as this beautiful pedestrian space right here known as Pasaje Hidalgo. It's a wonderful place to come down and take some photos, grab some snacks, or listen to some local music. And make sure to come down here at night because it is lit up and just gorgeous. To the west of the plaza, you will find the Regional Museum of Michoacan, where you can learn more about the history of the region from pre-Hispanic through the revolution. And the architecture is stunning too. It is open from nine to five, Tuesday through Sunday and costs 65 pesos, but is free on Sunday. Something very interesting we learned was that this city, when it was founded in 1541, was originally named Valladolid by New Spain. But after the Mexican War of Independence led by hometown hero and military leader, Jose Maria Moreno, it was renamed in his honor in 1828 to Morelia. And just south of the Zocalo, you can visit the place where he was born in 1765. Check it out. It has since been restored and turned into a museum where you can see some of his belongings, documents, paintings, and a library. It costs 50 pesos to enter, but is free on Sunday. Now, if you want to see where Morelos lived, head over one block to his historic house. This century's old mansion has been turned into a museum where you can learn more about his life and role in the independent 
independence movement, as well as see some paintings, furniture, and period objects. It costs 65 pesos to enter, but is free on Sunday for nationals. All right, who is ready for a little snack? We've heard that we must try at Gaspachos, which is a regional specialty, so let's go find some. I'll be honest, when I thought of gazpachos, I was thinking we were having some cold soup, but this is nothing like that, and it makes me so happy. We got the normal, which features piña. We got some pineapple, mango, jicama. There's some cheese, chili, lime juice, and orange juice. Looks a little crazy, but let's taste it out. Wow. <laughs> Definitely a flavor explosion. The fruit is nice and sweet and acidic, acidic, and it works really well with that cheese and that chili. I can see why this is a popular snack here. Adam, you're gonna love this. Yeah. Wow, this looks <laughs> so good. Definitely stop by Gaspacho's El Guero de la Merced and grab yourself a fruit cup. And say hi to those guys, they are so friendly. Let's try this out. I feel like this could be a good breakfast mm. too, or just any time snack. Wow, instead of the normal, this should be called the Adam because it's sweet, spicy, and cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> All it right. Needs, it needs more cheese to be you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna finish this up and head into the market right here. Behind me here is Mercado de Dulces y Artesanías. It's an amazing place to come down and grab yourself some regional candies as they are known for them here. Maybe a souvenir, some copper items. They have a wide variety of goods, so definitely take some time to browse the stalls. Next to the market, you will find the Central Cultural Clavijero. This cultural center is without a doubt a must-see. Not only will the architecture blow your mind, but the exhibitions are so unique and thought-provoking. I mean, look at this one. All of the art is made out of puzzle pieces. The creativity here will just inspire you. Running up the stairs is a large mural that leads you to a lookout where you can take some artsy photos such as these. It is open Tuesday through Sunday with free entry. And just next to the cultural center, you will find the public library which was constructed in the 17th century and is filled with books and beautiful murals. It's yet another impressive stop on your journey through Morelia. And please drop us a comment. Let us know what you think so far of this city. We would love to hear from you. Just down the road here is Jardín de las Rosas, a beautiful square lined with gardens. On Sunday, there were artists out here selling their incredible works and the cafes and restaurants were full. It is one of the cutest corners we found. And while we are sitting here enjoying ourselves in the park for a little bit, we would love to give a shout out to our new patrons. David, Ali, Jay, Matt, and Tracy. Thank you so much for becoming a part of this community. We're so lucky and blessed to have you. Seriously, you make all <laughs> yeah. the difference while we're out exploring the world and we appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. We do, you rock. So if you would like to join our Patreon community, we'll put the link in the description below. But we have a ton more to do today, so we better get on it. Just north back on the main road, you can find La Universidad Michoacana de San Nicolas Hidalgo. It is a beautiful spot and where many of the heroes of the Mexican independence worked and studied. Entrance is free, so you're able to come in here and enjoy the grounds and the murals. It's very nice. We are now gonna head down the main street here to another beautiful part of the city. Come along. And along this main road here, you're gonna find many more restaurants and shops. And on Sundays, they actually close it down from eight until one. It becomes pedestrian only. So you can come and bring your bike, take a ride, go running, roller skating, rollerblading, whatever you want. If you don't have your own bike, don't worry. They do have a tent set up where you can rent them for 30 pesos for a half hour. Just make sure to bring your ID. We are just east of the Zocalo now in probably my favorite area we have found here in Morelia so far. This is Plaza Bialongin, I believe. And as you can see, there are so many gardens. It is so well manicured. We come down here and just relax in the shade of the trees and enjoy the grass. It's a stunning place. 
across the street in front of the aqueduct, which we will be exploring in just a little bit, is Fuente de las Tarascas, which is a beautiful fountain that is a symbol of the city. This statue is comprised of three native Purepecha women holding a basket of fruit. It is very powerful. Across the street from the park, you will find several restaurants as well as Calleon del Romance or the Romance Alley. So you better pucker up, baby. <laughs> It got its name because there are pieces of a love poem along the walls as you walk down. There are a bunch of flowers and fountains and little nooks to get your romance on. Hey, what's going on over here? Self-love, baby. Oh, okay, <laughs> I can live with that. Knock, knock. Who's there? Love. Love who? Love me. <laughs> Always. What a lovable place. Definitely come down here and get some besos in. Now let's head over to the aqueduct. Back in the day, this iconic aqueduct used to bring fresh water from outside the city to inside the city for its residents. It has 253 arches and spans nearly two kilometers long, about a quarter of its original construction. Unfortunately, in the late 1700s, its foundation collapsed, leaving many residents without access to water. But luckily, a monk by the name of Antonio de San Miguel stepped in and made a plan for its reconstruction, which functioned until 1910. And it just so happens that this walkway behind me right here is named for that very same man. This pedestrian walkway runs parallel to the aqueduct and connects the urban historic center to the east of the city where the sanctuary of Our Lady of Guadalupe is established. What a beautiful space to come down and spend some time in the shade or just take a little walk, but make sure to come down here at night and see it all lit up in these lanterns. It's really sweet. And along the way, you will notice some restaurants and cafes and bakeries you can pop into as well. They look really nice. I needed a little pick-me-up, so I stopped in restaurant bakery Origo and grabbed myself an almond croissant and some <laughs> coffee. It looks delicious. What'd you get for me? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I didn't want one. But mm. we are going to eat again very soon. Wow, that is just so soft and filled with that almond paste inside, ma'am. Mm. Okay, give me a bite. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> and at the end here, you can find the Amorelia sign. I feel like this city is just full of love. Can you guys feel it? Because I know we sure can. And just to the right, you will find Parque Morelos, which features a large open area. It's also lined with a bunch of trees and palm trees, which seem very unique, as well as a large regal statue of, you guessed it, Morelos himself. And right across the street here is Bosque Coatamuk. It is known as the Lung of Morelia. It's a huge green space that's great for going to take a stroll, hang out, have a picnic, take your kids to the little amusement park inside. Who knows? It's a great time and you should definitely check it out. All right, it is my turn to eat and I am looking for some traditional tamales. I've heard that Michoacan is known for corundas and uchepos. So what do you say we go on a tamal treasure hunt? Oh girl, now you're talking <laughs> my language. We'll see you at the restaurant. Welcome to Quiche. This restaurant is incredible inside and their menu is as well. It has Oaxacan and Michoacan offerings. You can see they're denoted with either an M or an O. A lot of traditional stuff here. We ordered more than a few items. <laughs> My kind of meal. I know, I can't wait. We'll see you when it arrives. Wow, look what we are starting off with. This is Sopa Tarasca, which is an example of the local Purepecha cuisine. He said it has some frijol that is mixed with some roasted tomato. You can see on top is this beautiful design of crema, avocado, and some edible flowers that they grow up on the roof. Ooh, and some cojita cheese. Oh. It looks amazing. Let me give it a little taste here. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious and hearty, great flavor. Yeah, you gotta try this. And look at this, we have found the treasure. These are the carundas and these are the chepos. I believe these are a bit more sweet. They're made with sweet, fresh corn. They are both bathed in this red salsa. There's some pork over here and these very cute, delicate, edible flowers. So let's jump in. I'm starting out with the sweet one. <laughs> you would, that's so you. Mm, wow. The freshness of the corn is just like right on your tongue. It's nice and sweet and the, the spice from the sauce just kind of gives it this perfect balance in your mouth. You have got to try these. Mm. <laughs> Save some for me. <laughs> Time to try the Karundas. Mm. Wow. That salsa is delicious, just a little bit spicy. These are a lot more dense. 
I think I prefer the Uchepos. I like that sweetness to them and they're like a bit more fluffy, but. Just like me. <laughs> They're both wonderful. And I just realized that the uchepos definitely taste like cornbread and that's probably why I love them so much. Mm. Whoa. Oh my goodness. This wow. is the principal. Wow, that's amazing. And for the main event, I got the <laughs> enchiladas morelianas. These wow. are enchiladas in chili guajillo. They have some cojeta cheese on top, potatoes, carrots, this beautiful piece of chicken over here. Honestly, they remind me of the enchiladas mineras that we had in Guanajuato. In Guanajuato. Oh, man, they were so good. I cannot wait to jump into these. They're all yours, I'm full. Oh, babe, I love you even more now. <laughs> And our waiter, Mario, who is absolutely great, brought us over an actual chili guajillo. These are not spicy at all. They're just for flavor. Yeah, it's a dried chili here. Mm, delicious. Gracias, Mario. Gracias. Gracias. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, another home run. We're gonna finish up this meal. And we'll see you in just a little bit. What a day. Seriously, wow. this city blew us away. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not to fall in love like this. I know, but as we promised before we go, some recommendations, starting with La Conspiracion de 1809. We started with the guacamole and a roasted garlic cream soup. Oh my God, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we also tried the pork belly and a dark rich mole. But the best dish here was definitely the uchepos. They are a must try. Next up, the lasagna factory. <laughs> Who doesn't want to go to a lasagna factory? <laughs> we got lasagna bolognese, fettuccine alfredo, and a nice Mediterranean salad. And they were all wonderful. Definitely recommend it. And for all of our vegan viewers, Tierra Mona fits the bill. We went with the menu of the day, which included a drink, soup, main, and dessert, all for 85 pesos. It was so fresh and so, so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're looking for a low key, fun rooftop bar and restaurant, check out Manglar. Especially if you want something light on the wallet. <laughs> yeah, we got the shrimp burrito and a shrimp burger, which we really enjoyed. And I would definitely recommend heading back Back there at night because it looks like a very cool spot. I cannot believe Adam didn't just say it was shrimp tastic. Oh man, I missed <laughs> the opportunity. Shrimp, it was shrimp tastic. <laughs> but thank you so much again for being here with us today. It would have been nowhere near as much fun if you hadn't been here to share it with. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ling 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 the bell. We'll see you next time. Adios. <laughs>